I'm Isabel. I'm at the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver and today I'm going to be showing you some management techniques for scotch broom and some identifying tips. Scotch broom was first introduced to Vancouver Island in the 1850s and is now widely spread today throughout the Metro Vancouver region. Patches of scotch broom provide minimal benefits to wildlife as it doesn't really provide a food source to them and can actually impede um, the movement of wildlife through areas. So it also doesn't really provide any habitat for them. And the plants themselves, if eaten by animals, is actually toxic. This invasive plant produces a highly flammable oil, which increases the risk of spreading wildfires by fueling them. Scotch room can grow to be up to three meters tall and one way to ID it is the stem is usually green, but the more mature the plant gets, the more brown and woody. So this one is pretty young, considering it's still green and flexible, but the older they get, it'll become more brown. These are the scotch broom leaves, and you can see they're pretty small. They can grow to be between five to 20 millimeters, and they have an oval shape. They are arranged alternately along the stem and they actually have three per leaf so this is a compound leaf the flowers of scotch broom are quite easy to distinguish they are bright yellow and could actually sometimes be found to be red or orange tinged but more commonly you'll find them to be yellow there's about two to three pea-like petals on them and the petals uh, reach to be about two centimeters in length. So these are the seed pods for scotch broom and they look pea-like. So these are this year's and they're green, they haven't opened up yet and this is last year's and you can see they've opened up and they've turned brown. Each seed pod can eject five to 12 seeds and each mature scotch broom plant can produce up to 10,000 seeds per growing season. And those seeds can survive for 30 to 40 years and possibly up to 80 years. These long lasting seed banks are one of the main reasons why this plant is very invasive and very resilient in any habitat. The most recommended and effective way to remove scotch broom is by pulling it. So I have my gloves on and I found a scotch broom that's a decent size to pull out. The stem should be about one and a half centimeters in diameter and that those will be pretty easy to pull out. And you just grab the plant at the base. And the best time to do this is usually during the wet months of the year, during the rainy season. They'll be easier to pull out because the soil is a bit softer. And then you just pull it out. Although the recommended method for removing scotch broom is to pull it, Sometimes it's difficult because it has established roots. So the second recommended method is to cut it. So this plant here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut very close to the ground in a flat cut. You don't wanna cut an angle because it, causes a, it can cause hazards for wildlife or humans. If they trip over and there's an angled cut, they could get injured. It is also recommended to cut the scotch broom when it is brown and no longer green. The stem should also be greater than five centimeters in diameter. Cutting the plant in bloom or shortly after will minimize its ability to successfully re-sprout as it will die in the summer's heat. This will therefore avoid the need to remove the roots.
For small volumes of scotch broom, you can leave them on sites scattered or mulched, or deposit in densely shaded areas under conifers where there is no ground vegetation. For larger volumes, you can dispose the plants by chipping. Performing chipping activities off-site or chip into the existing scotch broom impacted area to minimize spread of undetected seeds. The Guide on Best Management Practices for Scotch Broom in the Metro Vancouver area is available at the link in the description below. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and check out www.iscmv.ca to learn more.